What is something you only know if you grew up poor? Everything around you can be a toy. My action figure collection included a stick, a mason jar, an off-brand Barbie given to me by an older cousin, and a bunch of melted green army men that looked like a giant. We had the best adventures. My mom played with nail polish bottles as dolls as a kid, even though they were well off. While I grew up poor, the imagination wasn't lost on me, and I made toys out of all sorts of things. I had them all in shoe boxes for storage. When they were all out then the box became their house. Your mom having to borrow money from you to pay for food slash bills. Also the embarrassment of people comparing Christmas gifts with you when they got expensive electronics and toys. I used to hate when teachers asked the class what they got for Christmas. The drug dealer next door is actually really nice and so is his huge black dog. My dad was an attorney and when I was very young a dealer lived across the street from us. I asked about it as an adult and my dad said he was nice and he wasn't bothering us so why would I bother him? And when I asked him to keep the cars from driving up so late at night so you could sleep, he did it right away. Nice guy. Santa discriminates based on income. I guess I broke my hardworking single mom's heart one year when I asked mama was I not good enough this year? Santa didn't bring me toys like he brought my friends. And I guess she just responded by asking if I got the things I asked for, like a book and a doll or something, and I said yes, so she said all those other kids must have just been greedy. There's been a thing going around social media for a few years now, especially Facebook, saying that if you're gonna buy your kids expensive crap for Christmas, say it's from you, and not from Santa. Make the Santa presents the small things that everyone gets. Then it looks less like Santa's an ignorant dude who really doesn't like little Sadie, but thinks the spoiled angry brat Caleb had a great year. I distinctly remember one person on my friends list going on an absolute rant about I'll buy my kids whatever I damn well want, and I don't need some meme telling me I can't give them nice presents. Seriously cold have given them a slap around the head. Red incomprehension, people. I learned it in primary school, it's not that hard. That McDonald's can be a place for special occasions only. I work in a restaurant in a more affluent area and recently overheard a parent talking about their kid, who was off playing in the kid's area, saying something along the lines of well he'll just have to suck it up and get McDonald's then. Now I didn't get the full context of it so maybe they were quoting someone else or whatever. But to me it still implied that having to get McDonald's instead was some form of punishment for this or some other kid. Like, that was a fucking treat to me when I was a kid. Not saying we were so bad we only got McDonald's a few times a year. We got it semi-regularly, even if because Anon would buy us it. But McDonald's was still better than our alternatives most of the time. Then again this is a restaurant where customers regularly buy $30 steak dinners intended for adults. And when I serve the meals they point to the 8 year old and say that's for him. Knockoff brands are enjoyable when you first get them, but can quickly become a point of ridicule when found out. I had knockoff toys. All my friends had Transformers and G.I. Joe. I had Mega Power Robot Man and Adventure Team. No Kung Fu grip, no bendable joints, just Lego-like holes where the accessories were stuck in until the pegs broke off during combat. I remember saving my allowance for weeks. To be able to go into Zellers and buy an actual G.I. Joe, but them never having the ones I wanted. We didn't make trips to Toys R Us or the bigger stores because we could get everything we really needed at Zellers cheaper. On the other hand, it makes you real careful with your possessions. I have never broken a phone ever and I have a 160 GB iPod classic from 2007 in perfect condition despite almost daily use. Walmart is typically 24 hours and is a good place to escape the cold and riffraff of the streets when you're a homeless kid. Also back when arcades were a thing a lot of people would drop coins under the machines, so that was a good way to scrounge for food money. Also learned how to turn the water and power on in empty houses when I was willing to risk getting thrown in jail, which honestly would have been an improvement. My brother and I grew up harsh and with no support system other than each other. We still only have each other, but we made it through, and the experiences made us better people. 
what you used to eat growing up is no longer affordable since it became trendy slash superfood. <laughs> Collard greens and broccoli ray were both foods of poverty for American blacks and Sicilians. Price them on your local supermarket today. Better yet, see what they go for in an upscale restaurant. Along those lines I remember how shocked I was when I discovered that the pig's trotters I saw on the menu of a fancy restaurant were nothing more than pig's feet. The same thing my grandfather's Porsche Aerocropus family ate when he was a little boy. <laughs> Finding our mum crying in the kitchen counting pennies when you can't afford a loaf of bread. As the eldest of three, at the time, now four, I was the confidant. Up until I was 7 it was a constant struggle to afford food, worse between the ages of 5 and 6. When I was about 10, mum sent me to the shop to buy milk. Somehow, being the idiotic kid that I was, I managed to lose the $10 she gave me. The shop was only 2 minutes walk away, but even retracing my steps I couldn't find it anymore. Mum was absolutely devastated when I got home and told her I lost the money. That reaction just really shocked me. I knew it was bad that I lost the money and I expected her to be angry, but she started crying instead. It was only years later that I realized that this was probably the last bit of money she had at the time. You can survive on Kraft Macaroni for 3 years. My son loved macaroni as a kid. We asked our doctor and he said kids get in a food rut and only want one thing and it's fine if that's what he wants every day. A few weeks later we're in the air for what we thought was his appendix, nope, just really backed up. Sad to see a 3 year old trying to poop in the air and the suppository thing. He did get his appendix out last year, though. That was hell to see my kid, well, he was 17, go through all that. He was a damn champ, though. He's way tougher than I am, or ever will be. Careful with cheese products, they can back you up and it hurts. Colon close bracket. The check engine light really isn't that important. Beans and rice are everything. Parents can be really really good at hiding how bad it is financially. There are so, so many alternatives to buying brand new household items. Rice can be an entire meal. My mom preferred it with butter, cinnamon and sugar. So can cornbread. If you're cold, put on another layer, walk up and down the basement steps a few times, drink some hot water, sit on your hands, etc. You can water down skim milk to make it last longer. I still to this day can't drink anything thicker than skim. Gardens are a necessity, not a luxury. Other kids are greedy in their Santa lists. That's the only reason they get more toys from him. Hand-me-downs are your only option, at least until you're the tallest cousin by the age of 10. Garage sales take up a majority of your weekends. Always haggle prices. Dented cans are cheaper. Buy the recently expired or about to expire packaged food for cheap cheap and then freeze it. That is yogurt. Expired cake mix works up 4 mug cakes in the microwave just fine 3 tablespoons cake mix, 2 tablespoons water, 1 minute in the microwave. A spoonful of peanut butter can be dessert. You wash and reuse plastic silverware and also reuse food containers as Tupperware. How to really stretch and reuse leftovers. How to make yourself feel more full on less food. Drink a full glass of water before dinner and add cheap fillers to dinner like bread, beans, or crackers. Hunger naps. In America, if a price sticker on the shelf is lower than what it rings at, they have to give you the lower price. So if you know when they change their price tags, you can likely find some that haven't been changed out yet, giving you access to more lower prices, since they will already have started putting new ones up, too. This one is morally shaky, but it works. My mom did this one a lot, since we lived far from the grocery store, and it saved us gas money from going multiple times during different deals. No matter how much you boil rainwater, it always tastes kinda funny. The crushing fear of asking for anything, even when it was a necessity. My thighs have always rubbed together, and I'd only have one pair of jeans that fit, so I'd wear through the thighs in a couple months and end up chafing my thighs for weeks, and try to patch them by crummily sewing socks over the holes. It was a nightmare. Now that I'm financially secure, and have like 6 different pairs of well-fitting jeans, I've had them all for well over a year and none have worn through yet. Eating at McDonald's was considered a luxury. I think it cost around $25 to $30 to
to feed a family of seven at McDonald's back then. Versus. For a little bit more, maybe $40 to $50. My mom could buy a small bag of rice and some kind of meat, chicken, pork, fish, and veggies and feed our family of seven for the entire week. This is all back in 1995. <laughs> Thrift stores are your friend. Wet slash wild makeup was just as good. I grew up in the late 80s slash 90s so, if we got new clothes it was a miracle, and only from a Kmart that had $1 shoes, which I wore. Patching holes in your pants, because you didn't always get new ones for every school year slash summer. Adults who knew your family story felt sorry for you, and would give you gift cards to buy clothes at TJ Maximum or Marshalls. Also getting a computer was a privilege which we didn't have until it was given to us by someone. Charity. That your brain would get your further grant slash scholarships to college. Which I was the first to graduate from both high school and college. I still enjoy thrift stores, but am thankful for being able to provide what is needed slash wanted for my family.